Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to wrap a sort of doodle shape around a circle. So here on the screen is the kind of doodle shape that we're going to create and we're going to then wrap it around a circle. So we're going to start out with a brand new document. You need something that's wider than it is tall. I'm just using 1920 by 1080 which is the size of my screen. For doing my drawing I'm going to use the pencil tool because it's pretty forgiving. I'm going to double click on it and make sure fidelity is set to smooth so that my lines are going to be smoothed all the way out. So it doesn't matter if I do lots of lumps and bumps as I draw this. And I'm using a mouse so lumps and bumps as I draw it are expected. So I'm going to draw basically the shape I want to use. So I'm just using some loops. Just ignore how bumpy this is because it's not going to stay that way. As you can see that setting on the pencil tool has smoothed everything out really, really nicely. And this is a really good shape. If you don't like yours, just undo it and start over again. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller at this point. I want to fill in these little loops here. So I'm going to select over my shape and I'm going to the Shape Builder tool. With the Shape Builder tool selected, I can then go and select a color. So I'm going to choose this sort of hot pink here. Let me just zoom in so you can see what's happening. I'm going to hover over this loop and you can see that it gets a sort of shaded middle. I'm just going to drag inside it with my mouse. Now I lost my color so let's just go and repeat that with the color. So now we've got a sort of colored loop here. I'm going to do the same over here but I'm going to choose a different color. So let's go for an orange and let's just drag inside there. Now I'm going back to selecting my shape and I'm going to target the stroke this time and make it a sort of dark brown red. I need a lot more of these to go around the circle so I'm going to select over this and choose Object, Transform and I'm going to choose Reflect and choose Vertical and then Copy. And that gives me the exact same shape but reflected. Now with it still selected I'm going to drag it over here but add the shift key as I do so it's constrained to moving in a perfectly horizontal direction so everything's nicely lined up I don't have to do anything with the alignment. I'm just checking the spaces between these objects because that's going to be important. I want a little teardrop to go in here so I'm going to choose the oval or the circle tool just drag out an oval I'm going to select with the direct selection tool just the anchor point at the bottom of this shape and click here on the convert selected anchor points to corner and that gives you a nice little teardrop shape. Let me zoom in here. I think it's not quite little enough so let's just shrink it a little bit. And I'm going to change its color to a sort of yellow. Okay, that's looking good. Let's zoom out. I'm using Control 0 that would be Command 0 on the Mac to zoom out. This is not enough and it's also too big. So I'm selecting everything and holding a Shift key as I shrink it down. I'm going to select it again and this time just Alt drag a duplicate away. And while I'm doing that I'm going to add the Shift key to constrain the movement to a perfectly horizontal movement. Again looking at the spacing between these elements because I want to drop yet another teardrop shape in there. I'm going to borrow the existing teardrop shape so let's just go and select this and we'll alt drag a duplicate of it away and pop it in position here. If you hold the shift key as you drag it away you'll make sure that again it goes in a perfectly horizontal direction. I'm going to select it. I'm going to fill it with a sort of purple color. Still nowhere near enough of these so I'm going to select over all of them, shrink them down a little bit and make another duplicate. Alt drag a duplicate away. Hold the shift key to just adjust that spacing. I'm looking for the spacing. I've got the smart guide showing here so they're helping me with this spacing quite a bit. I need another one of these purple ones to go in this spot so let's just go and grab the purple one and Alt shift drag and drop it into position. 
I have one, two, three, four yellow teardrops. And I only have three purple ones. I need an extra purple one to go at the end here because this shape over here is going to end up wrapped around the circle and right next to this one. So I'm going to borrow one of my existing purple ones and pop it over here at the end. I found that most recent versions of Illustrator make it a little bit difficult to drag things around, so you might need to zoom in to get nice and close. So I'm just looking at the spacing here between this and this. If it needs to be cleaned up a little bit, I want about the same amount of space here as I've got over here. And if I'm going to change anything, it's going to be this that's going to change. I'm just going to nudge it a little bit. I think I'm good now. So this is going to be the shape that we're going to wrap around our circle. And to do that, we're going to create a brush from this. So we're selecting absolutely everything. We're going to the Brushes panel, click the plus sign at the bottom of the panel, choose Art Brush, click OK. The only thing that you need to do here is to select Scale Proportionally. So it's going to be Scale Proportionally around the circle. Make sure that the direction here is pointing to the right so that it's going to be wrapped around your circle correctly. Click OK. Now we need a circle, so let's go to the Ellipse tool, drag out a circle. We're going to remove the fill on it. We're going to target the stroke and then we'll go to our brush and just click on our brush. So what's happened now is that our brush has been wrapped around our circle. Now there is going to potentially be a problem and it's going to be over here because this is the end of the stroke. And this is the shape that we had. This is the bit over here, which is this end loop and the teardrop. And this is the one that's over here. And the spacing is not quite right and it's not going to be right and you don't know how bad it is until you do this and at that point you can actually do something about it. So what we need to do is to make sure that when this brush goes down there's a little bit of extra space added to the end of it. Sounds tricky but it's actually perfectly easily done. Let's get rid of this bit. I'm just going to delete it. I don't need it any longer and it's just going to get a little bit confusing. Let's go to the brushes panel and you're going to drag the brush out of the brushes panel into your document. When you look at a brush that's been dragged out of the brushes panel, every single brush that you drag out of the brushes panel is going to have a no fill, no stroke rectangle around it. So here, let's just, so let's go to the layers palette because it's going to be easier for me to show you where it is and for you to pick up where it is. So here is the group that is our brush and at the very bottom of that group of objects is our path here which is a no fill no stroke rectangle. I'm just targeting it and here it is. It's butted right up against the loop here and what we want to do is to add a little bit of extra space so that when the other loop and the teardrop come in they're not sitting so close to this one. And the way we do it is we're just going to enlarge the no fill, no stroke rectangle a little bit. It doesn't have to be very much, just a little bit. Now let's grab everything again and make a brush out of it. And because we're bringing our own no fill, no stroke rectangle with it, Illustrator's not going to add another one. In fact, it's going to use the one we just added or fixed, and that's going to fix the brush for us. So art brush, OK, scale proportionally, click OK. Your new brush will be lower in the brushes palette. So this is the new one. This is the old one that didn't work. So let's go and select our circle and apply our new brush. And you'll see that it just nudged a little bit out of the way. So the spacing between the end of the brush, which is this loop here and this teardrop, and the other end of the brush, which is this bit here, which is this here, is now more even. Now, once you've got that working, you can flip it if you want to. So you can come in here and flip it across. So you can get a slightly different look to your sort of doodle applied to a circle by flipping the brush across the shape. Now, I used only a few numbers of repeats of this element. If you wanted something more detailed, you could add a lot more to it. But that's the basis of trying to get things that are a straight line wrapped around a circle. A heads up that if you want things to join, it's really difficult. That's why I created a shape that had sort of breaks at the end because 
it's a little bit easier to get the spacing right. If you have two ends that you want to join up, not only do you have to get the ends to appear in exactly the right place to join up, but you also have to get your spacing right. And that can be a bit tricky. Not impossible, just a bit tricky. But there, right now, we have our circle that has our sort of doodle design applied to it. It's fully scalable. It is done using a brush that we've created ourselves in Adobe Illustrator. If you want to be able to use this brush again, you're going to want to save it because otherwise, if you don't save this document, your brush is gone forever. And if you do save your document, the brush is going to be in the document, but it's not going to be accessible to any other document. So let me just first get rid of the brush that didn't work because we don't want to be saving things that don't work. It's also a really good idea to get rid of every single brush that you can get rid of. So just grab them. And if when you grab them, they show as a trash can in the toolbar, then it's likely that you'll be able to remove them, at least most of them. You want to get down to as fewer brushes as possible because you're going to save this now as a brush. So click the fly out menu, choose save brush library. And we're going to give this a name. I'm going to call it doodle and just click save. When you do this, Illustrator is going to save the brush in the exact place that it expects brushes to be saved. This will mean that in future in another document, you'll be able to add this brush or use it in another document. So if I create a brand new document very quickly here, when we look in the brushes palette for that document, our doodle brush does not appear. But if we go to the fly out menu and choose open brush library and user defined, we can open our doodle brush here is our doodle brush. If I click on it, it's automatically added to the brushes palette. I've got my circle selected here. So let's just drag out a circle and apply our brush to it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned things about Illustrator of which you are unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.